Hey guys, the Buddha Man here. I'm coming at you with my hiking and my backpacking gear loadout that I bring with me when I go hiking or backpacking. The other day I was on a hike and this gentleman asked me what type of gear does he need to start backpacking? And I figured since I'm a new backpacker, relatively new backpacker myself, I think having a video like this would be very helpful to you guys that want to get out and start exploring. I think this is pretty valuable. And I've watched lots of videos online as well about like what type of gear you would need. Uh, in the end, it's really kind of like an individual choice. Hey guys, just interrupting the video real quick. Uh, I originally intended this video to be a single part. However, as I'm editing it right now, I'm finding out that it's going to be a bit too long to make it a single video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it up to two parts. Uh, the first part, which you're watching right now. The second part, I'll release probably a week or two later. Also, I wanted to let you guys know that I will have timestamps down in the description so you can navigate to a particular item that you want or that you're interested in just to make it a little bit easier on you because I, you know, I appreciate the patience and I know you guys, I appreciate your time even just watching the video as well. So again, appreciate the support. Thank you guys very much for that. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already and uh, I'll get back into this one. Cheers, guys. I'll just go through those items give you the reasons why I chose them, whether they were cheap or inexpensive or other options. There's a lot you can do with backpacking in general when it comes to the gear that you need. Dwindling it down to a few different things or a few key things I think is sort of essential. Whether you want to choose it because it's light or you just like the features that that thing offers. Um, I always say um. Stop saying um. So having another look at what I thought was valuable for me in my backpacking experiences might give you another view from the other people that are out here on YouTube, you know, saying the same thing or something similar or something different even at that point. Obviously there's the essentials, which maybe I could get to that into another video, but uh, I think I'm going to get into this video and actually start going through the gear that I picked. But before I do that though, if you're new to the channel, I'm Mike. I'm all about travel, I'm all about hiking, and I'm all about fitness. I love that type of stuff. So if you like those types of videos, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, uh, hit the follow, uh, not the follow, but the little bell icon as well. And that way you're notified when I post future content. Uh, I plan on making more videos like this, either informational type videos or even posting videos of my hikes. Without further ado, I'm gonna start getting into the gear that I've got. And I think I'll start off with maybe the not so obvious one. It's something that, you know, everybody has to do it out in mother nature and you're always kind of like concerned about it. Number one, you always gotta have TP with you. You can't go out there without having some sort of TP on you. Now, depending on where you go, you have to bury it. Uh, some of the ones actually make you take it out with you. I haven't come across any of those parts yet, in which case you want to make sure you have some like pretty solid like Ziploc bags or something like that, because if you're going to be carrying that type of stuff in your, in your bag, you don't, don't want to have anything like that um, smelling up your bag. Anyway, number one is TP for sure. You got to have that with you. A second to that though actually is, I'm a big fan of these, I like these things, but they're the individual, and considering it's, like, it's a, I'm a guy, they're the dude wipes. I like these, they're most in like towel wet type things that you use to wipe your bum. I like them because these are individually sealed so they maintain their moisture and they give, there's vitamin E and stuff like that in it too that makes your, makes your bum feel pretty nice. I kind of stick them here in this little pack that I got. Uh, I got this pack from REI, this pack actually came with a little towel as well, like a little wash wash towel. So I bring that with me just in case I need to wash myself or anything like that. You can just get some water, sprinkle it on here, just wash yourself real quick. Uh, you can get Castile, Castile soap, like Dr. Bronner's Castile soap. You bring that with you, just put a little bit on here and then you just give yourself like a quick little wipe. And uh, make sure when you're backpacking, you get the unscented stuff. And I'll get into why you want to make sure that you have unscented and food and all that stuff like bags separately because I have a pretty good example of what happens when you don't do that. But anyway, those are the two things that I obviously make sure I bring with me all the time. Another one, raincoat or rain cover. I mean, this is only like a couple bucks. I think it's like two or three bucks. Um, I should mention too, this towel was like, I think like eight bucks at REI, something like that. But yeah, this I just bring this rain cover with me just in case. If I know it's gonna rain, I usually bring a rain jacket as well. But this is just a good backup, just in case. You can buy bags that have rain covers built into it. My hiking backpack actually does have a rain cover built into it. Uh, but I don't necessarily trust those all the way because even though it goes around the bag, it can still get in between your back and the bag, the, the water. 
So you can still get your back all wet. You can still get the, I guess, the back side of the bag all wet. So that's why I always bring this because then you can just use this to cover yourself and the bag and therefore everything is dry underneath. So I always bring that. It's still wrapped pretty tightly because I haven't had to use it yet. I guess I got really lucky with all the leather. Um, another thing to bring is a patch kit. Uh, this is the patch kit that came with my sleeping pad over there. I don't have a patch kit for the tents, but usually what I do is I always, they sell like these little, I guess, little rolls of duct tape. So I always make sure I bring these little rolls of duct tape with me because if you do need to patch something quickly out in the field or out while you're hiking, these are good for that. So I make sure I bring that with me. Another thing you always want to bring, and I bring a couple of these actually, are the carabiners. Uh, this is for one, to hang your food when you go to bed at night. Like I said, you want to make sure that you hang your food. Otherwise, animals will find a way to get into it. <laughs> so that's not good. Now, it is, is no, not for climbing. These aren't climbing carabiners. Uh, even though it does say it'll hold up to 75 pounds, that's quite a bit. But I use this, and along with that, you also need paracord rope. This one's 50 feet, bright orange, so that when you hang it out in the woods, when you get up in the morning, you can actually go out and find it. Uh, so it's nice and visible at that point. Another cool thing that I like to bring with me is this anti-blister balm foot glide. Uh, I haven't had to use it too much, but it is pretty valuable when you think you're starting to get like a, like a blister or something like that. Just put this stuff on. And sometimes I put it on even before I go hiking. Um, and I haven't had any blisters yet. So I'd say the worst thing that's happened to me is I had shoes that are just like a little bit too big. As you're going down, your feet sort of jam in front of the, to the front of the, of the shoe. And because of that, I got, I got a black and blue mark on my, it was my right middle toe uh, on my West Virginia backpacking trip that uh, you guys hopefully looked at. If you didn't, go check that out. So that's why, uh, that's why I always bring this stuff to, especially if you're trying out a new pair of shoes, new pair of socks or something. The last thing you want to do is hike 10, 15 miles a day and have blisters on your feet. That would not be, not be good, so. It's light, it's small. This was pretty inexpensive, so I think it's worth having. Another item worth having is just this little light. All this does is it lights up the tent. It has these little hooks here, and inside the tents, most tents, they have a little, I guess, clasp or something like that that you can just kind of like wrap around here. And then it just hangs there, and this way you could turn, turn it on and get some light in your tent. And then one thing to make sure you always do is take the batteries out when you store them. In some instances, even when I'm hiking and I don't have things set up all the way, what I do is I flip one of the batteries around so that it's not the right way, so that way you can't accidentally turn, turn it on. Even though all the batteries are in there, so you don't have to worry about bringing extra batteries with you. But that's one thing that I always bring with me as well, especially for nighttime backpacking. Another item, actually I'll put this with the sleeping pad. Yeah, that's what you go over there. Oh, that rolled way too far away. Oh, well. Another thing that I always bring with me is the little Swiss Army knife. Uh, again, I think this was just a couple bucks. Just has some little scissors. I mean, it's not not anything major. It's got the toothpick, the tweezers. I guess in case you get any ticks on you, you can kind of like try to dig under there and pick them out. Um, um, and a couple little knives. Nothing. Like I said, nothing too crazy. I haven't had I haven't had an opportunity to use it yet, uh, and that's probably a good thing because if I had an opportunity to use it, that probably means I'm like hurt or something like that, or I have a tick on me. Or I guess I have something stuck in my tooth. Anyway, I always have one of these on me, just a little knife, just in case. You see some of those people that carry like these big survival knives and things like that. If you're going on like a standard backpacking trail, a simple backpacking trail I should say, you're not like, you're not going super backcountry or you're not bushwhacking or anything like that. I don't think necessarily you need one of those big survival knives. I have one and I was bringing it with me and I brought it with me on my, my solo backpacking trip the last time. I didn't use it at all. If anything, I just, I had it with me because I thought it made me feel safer. Because <laughs> I, was, I was doing a solo backpacking trip, so I wanted to have something to make me feel safer. But other than that, that feeling of, of safety, uh, it didn't really do much. Um, another thing you want to bring with you when you go backpacking is, of course, a nightlight or a headlamp. Uh, this one in particular, I got this one at, I think all the stuff I bought here is usually at, either at REI or one of the local outdoor shops around here. Uh, let me just put the batteries in so I can show you what it looks like and why, why in particular I chose this one. Gosh, I can't get the batteries out. 
I just cut my fingernails. That's why I have a Swiss Army knife. There we go. It, uh, that's the first time I actually had to use my Swiss Army knife. There's a little away on me. Put these in here. So in particular, one of the reasons why I got this one, and I think all these are like this, they all kind of like have like a little weather seal around it so you can walk in the rain and stuff like that. Um, it also has a little screw here. You can hand tighten and hand untighten this to get at the battery so you don't have to worry about bringing a screwdriver with you. But one of the key things I like about it is when you first click, click it, you get the red lights. What the red lights are helpful for is if you're actually talking with somebody at night. Because uh, if you're talking with somebody at night and you have the light on, you know, you're kind of like blinding them in the face the whole time. And you don't really want to do that. Oh God, I got, ah, uh, why did I do that? I got a big circle. Like it's very, anyway. <laughs> the, uh, that's why I got that. So that way you're not blinding me. Because you can look at that. It's still pretty bright, but at least it's not as bright as the white light. And at night, it's a bit softer, so it, it is kind of nice for that. It keeps your eyes more adjusted to the dark. And then along with that, it also has two levels of brightness. You have the standard brightness, which is that. And then you have a, a third level of brightness. Actually, sorry, that was, the, that was the highest brightness. This is like a lower level intensity. So I like that because if you could, you could put it on the low intensity and get more life out of the headlamp. And it also has this nice little swivel angle. Like there's a few spots where it swivels. So when you're walking along, so that you can walk around and actually see. I, I like that a lot. There's a few different angles. So that's why I like this one. Princeton Tech Viz. Um, it's fairly expensive because it's an LED. I think it was like 40, 50 bucks. Uh, the headlamps can get pretty pricey um, in general. So, and they, they also have rechargeable ones as well. So that's one thing you wanna make sure you always have with you as a headlamp. Even if you think you're gonna be back by daytime, you always have to have at least some sort of light source with you. Even your phone can do, uh, can do light in a pinch, but I, I'd rather have an actual light source with me, just in case. Now, two other things that you want to bring with you when you go backpacking for the first time, besides the food, and I'm talking about like dehydrated food and stuff like that, which I won't get into in this video, but you have to have some way of cooking it. I'm not 100% sure what you call these things. I guess it's kind of like a gas burner type thing. I got this off Amazon. It was like 20 bucks, I think. Uh, pretty inexpensive. And it's called uh, Snow Peak Igniter. So that's the brand Snow Peak. I don't know if you can see that. The only thing I don't like about it, which I'll show you here, um, it just opens up like this. You can put this like right on top and then you screw this right into the top of your fuel. So one thing to point out though, is there are universal tops for these. I forget what the, uh, what the codes are for them. In particular, this Jet Fuel or Jet Boy one, this Snow Peak one works with this. However, there are other ones, I think it might be like the Coleman ones that you see at Walmart and things like that. Those have a different thread. So you can't buy this and stick it on the Coleman uh, canisters. I'm not gonna turn this on in here because I'm, I'm in the house. I don't wanna have a fire in the house. But uh, simply, you would just kind of get this and screw this on the top. One design flaw, I guess you could say with this. When you pack this thing up, you can't keep this little flap like this. You can't keep this out here like that because it won't fit in this box. Now, I guess technically you could just travel with it like this, but then you have to worry about like this igniter getting bent and things like that. And you don't necessarily want that. So I always make sure I put it in the container to protect it because this is, this is what's going to heat up your, your food unless you know how to make a fire, which... I haven't yet to do that yet, um, probably because I have this. This kind of grab, this is your adjustment. It lets the amount of fuel in. So if you turn it to the left, like that, that's opening up the fuel, which goes into here. And then you have the little striker here. I don't know if you can see the little spark when it creates. Maybe you can see that, hopefully you can. But the downside to this design is when you store it like this, the default position is for this, I guess, metering nozzle in here to let fuel in. So if you screwed it on, just like take it out of here and just go screw it right on here, you're gonna be letting all that fuel right out almost instantaneously because you didn't turn this off. If you do pick up one of these, make sure when you take it out, you close it first. Make sure you close it and then screw it on the, screw it on the thread for your, your fuel. All right, and that's the fuel. Ah, what happened there? So anyway, yeah, yeah, I've been buying the jet boil stuff. I think the MSR cans work as well, but I've just been buying these because I know they work and the, the local store here sells these, not the MSR ones. And they're relatively inexpensive. I, I wanna say they're like four or five bucks. Um, they do have larger cans. Oh, I don't know 
don't have that happen. There's a good reason why I buy the small ones. And this is a technique, I guess, what people call nesting, where you have, get rid of that, you have like a container and you put something inside it, kind of like a, like a Russian nest, nesting doll, I guess is probably where the term came from, where you just have things packed inside each other. So the reason why I buy this one is it fits perfectly inside this little kitchen set that I've got. You just put that in there, it's good to go. And then I usually end up carrying an extra one with me. Uh, unless I know this one's brand new, because they're only guaranteed for a certain amount of time. A certain number of boils, I should say. So, this is good for 24 boils at a, if it's 100% full. And don't forget, that's also at probably atmospheric temperature. When you get higher in elevation and you start using this, that boil number goes down. Uh, so, if you're trying to, you know, light a fire on the top of, I don't know, Mount Everest, if you're over there for some reason, uh, it's not going to, it's going to take a lot longer for stuff to boil, so you'll be using a lot more fuel because of that. But anyway, so I guess I'll get onto this. This is a, let's see, what was this? GSI stainless steel mess kit. So this is a single person mess kit. I think this was about 30 bucks. But you always want to buy a mess kit. Uh, this is just a stainless mess kit. Now, I should point out that a lot of the gear that I have, it's sort of like basic entry level gear. It's heavier stuff so this is this is a bit heavy but that's okay because I was just getting into backpacking I'm not gonna spend eighty dollars on titanium mess kit when I'm not sure how many times I'm going to go backpacking so I figured I might as well get the stainless ones or if I ever decide to do something like a, like a through hike if I do the Appalachian Trail or the Pacific Crest Trail something where I know me on the road doing tons of miles I'm sorry on the trail doing tons of miles then I might consider upgrading to the lightweight stuff to make a difference. But for me, for the hikes that I do, you know, in between the 15 to 30 mile range, uh, carrying an extra like pound or two in my bag doesn't really bother me. I'm also relatively fit when it comes to hiking in general, so like carrying the, the extra couple pounds really doesn't do much to me. Um, not to brag, not to boast about that, but that's just how it is. I'm not too worried about carrying, taking a pound or two off if it's, you know, it's gonna cost me twice as much, if not three or four times as much, especially when it comes to like tents and other things, they get crazy expensive. You know, I, I think the rule of thumb is for every like pound that you save in a backpack, that's like a hundred bucks. So if you want to save like two or three pounds in your backpack, you're going to spend an extra like two, three hundred bucks. Keep that in mind. This stuff is relatively heavy. It's not lightweight. Uh, if you want to become a lightweight backpacker, then that's something that you have to consider. Consider. Uh, this is more, I'd say, for a general beginner's backpacking guide. And I don't think beginners are going to go out and buy like the most expensive things in the world uh, on their first go. So that's why I chose chose this one over the others. And it's kind of nice. It just has these little flip-out handles, so you just put that together, so you can sit there, set it on your uh, on your Snow Peak thing. I mean, you've seen the videos of this. I have it sitting on top there. And this kind of flips over and becomes like a little pan as well. Also in here, with the whole nesting concept, along with the fuel that I nest in here, I also have this little, um, I don't know, I guess this cleaning thing that I use to scrape off some of the extra food. It might not be something that you absolutely need, but I have it with me anyway, just because, like I said, it's just a couple, a couple extra bucks and a couple extra ounces. And it fits in here, it's not like it takes up any additional space in my bag. So, have that in there. Along with that, you also get a bowl, which is kind of nice. I set the bowl in here. Can't beat that. Um, now this bowl is a separate bowl, it doesn't come in that mess kit. We bought it separately, because the mess kit also comes with a little plate bowl thing. But uh, since there was two of us, uh, when Andrew and I were going backpacking, uh, for the first time, we wanted two plates. One could be hers, one could be mine. If I go by myself, I just take one of the bowls out. And then, there. And then you have the uh, pan itself, which you can see, uh, it's got some use. The one thing I will admit though, that I kind of wish this had, I don't know if you could see in there, but there's, there's no marks to tell you how much fluid is in there. And that's helpful for when you're making those dehydrated meals, they take a certain amount of water. If you put too much water in there, the food gets soggy, and you're essentially just wasted water as well. Which, as I've seen from my West Virginia video, video water is a pretty valuable resource when you're out on the trail and you can't find any. But uh, this doesn't have those graduations, so if I, if I do decide to upgrade the mess kit, that would probably be the main reason why I would do it. Anyway, that's what I like about, that's what I like about this kit. It fits all this stuff nice in there. 
I, I don't think this mesh kit weighs all that much, so I figured that this mesh bag weighs all that much. I like that. Uh, you also need, in order to eat, you need a spoon. I've got, we got this combo. I think, again, this was at uh, REI. It's a plastic spoon. It's lightweight. I know there's those people out there that are going to say, like, all right, well, you know, they, they make titanium spoons, super lightweight. You pick them up next to each other. I mean, are you really going to tell? I guess if you're an ultra light backpacker, then you would do that. But in the meantime, I just got this little plastic spoon slash fork. I think it was like five bucks. And it's light, it's light enough for me. And it works great. So I don't think I'll be upgrading that or updating that anytime soon. Another thing you want to bring with you, of course, little cup so you can make your coffee in the morning. You can bring tea or whatever you want, but I always bring a mug with me just in case. I don't want to put hot liquid in a bottle, which I'll explain why I have a smart waddle block. Small? Yeah. I'll explain why I have a smart waddle. Waddle? Smart waddle? A smart water bottle in a minute. I'll explain why I have that. Some other things I bring with me, probably not going to bring with me on future camping trips or future backpacking trips, unless I go overseas and where water, uh, I guess water is maybe questionable, even if you filter it, um, are these purification tablets. I mean, to be honest with you, I haven't used them at all. Most of the water here, at least in the US, you filter it with a, with a nice uh, high micron filter. You can filter out like all the bacteria and the viruses anyway. And worst case, you could always boil the water before you drink it. I haven't used them and I don't really think I'm ever going to use them. But speaking of water as well, when it comes to filtration, this is another kit uh, I got. This is from, we got this from Walmart actually, I think it was $25. And it's the Smart Water Sawyer Filter. Um, it's not the Sawyer Mini. I like this one a lot anyway because it's, it's fairly large, but it's not like it's one of those pumps. Um, the downside to this, though, is if you do have one of those pumping systems uh, where you, you, know, you have the thing, the hand pump, and you pump the water out through a hose into a filter and then out from the filter into your, into your bag or, or your bottle, that's nice because if the water level is low enough, you can still get water from it. This one, because you have to fill up this bag or fill up a water bottle first, you kind of have to get like really down in there and the flow has to be right too. So there's been quite a few times where I'm sitting there, the water is trickling in, but it's not really filling up the bag. It's hard to explain exactly without actually showing you, but there are conditions where like the water level is really low and I'm trying to do this. Well, I guess you could picture it here. If I'm trying to fill up water and the water's flowing this way, if the bag is like this, it's only gonna fill up so far and you'll have a lot of leftover open air in the bag. But if you have like a, like a trickle or something like that that's angled down, you can fill the bag up pretty nice then at that point. Um, you also have a hose and the way this works is the hose just connects to here and then you can connect this end to the filter but then you have a cap and then you just pop that cap off and then the water you just you've seen it you've probably seen this in the videos you just kind of like put pressure on, on here and then as the water goes through it filters it. The cool thing about this though is this filter actually screws right on top of a smart water bottle. So technically what you could do is you could just fill up this water bottle, go to your stream or whatever it is, fill it up, then just put this on top like so. And then yeah, then you just, you know, when you're ready to take the water, you just, you know, just squeeze it through that way. It's kind of like a squeeze, squeeze top bottle. Uh, I don't do that. And the reason I don't do that is because look how freaking tall this thing is. So I'm worried that for one, this thing's gonna like break off. You know, this thing's sitting in your side, in your side pocket or your back pocket. It's awkward to get your water bottle out of your bag then. That's, that's the reason why I don't do that and I fill up the bag instead. And then this way, I also know that all the water that comes in here is clean. So if I do decide to use this for future, which I have, I don't have to worry about cleaning it out as much. Since Smart Water does make smaller bottles than this and they still have the same cap, you can conceivably get the smaller water bottle if I've learned anything from my first solo backpacking trip is like, I make sure I carry a lot of water with me. I don't rely on the trail having it. I carry two of these and I fill them both up prior to getting to the trail. And then when I find water on the trail, then I fill up the bag and I keep one bag with me. And then also with the kit, you have the little uh, needle, little needle squeegee thing to clean out the, uh, clean out that. I don't necessarily need bring this with me all the time, uh, but
but sometimes I do. Sometimes I bring them with me. It's, it's light. It just takes up a little bit extra space. It's not that big of a deal. Another cool thing is I found these. Uh, these were at the farmer's market, actually. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Rut toothpaste or root toothpaste tablets. Um, and I like these because instead of carrying like a big tube of toothpaste or even like a little tube of toothpaste, if I know I'm going on the trail for like five days, I can just pop 10 tablets out of this, put it in like a little Ziploc bag, and then I'm good to go. You just put the tablet in your mouth, put some water in, and then it kind of gets like um, soft, and then you can break it down and then like brush your teeth, which I do bring a toothbrush with me. I don't have it here. And then I also bring um, floss with me as well, so I have floss. Now the key thing about that though is like when you brush your teeth and you want to spit the, the water out, it's scented. So you want to make sure you don't really do that too close to your campsite. You want to do that further away from the campsite. But that being said, since these are kind of nice and small, I bring them with me. And then another thing I bring with me, since I wear glasses, uh, I have my contacts in now, uh, I bring the, I have these little like things for my glasses because the last thing I want to do is be walking on the trail, have my glasses like slide off and fall either down a cliff or into a lake or something like that and then, then not be able to see. Uh, so I always make sure I have two ways that I could see. I have contacts with me and then I have glasses. Uh, if you don't have contacts, I bring an extra pair of glasses with me. At the very least, I leave the extra pair of glasses in my car. So that way I know that if I can at least get back to the car, I can still drive home because otherwise I can't drive without my glasses. I can't see Jack without my glasses. So let's just put it that way. Okay, I think one more thing I want to show you guys is I always bring bags like this. These are like, like dry bags that you can buy. There's a kit at Walmart you can buy. It comes with three bags, like a small, medium, and a large. Uh, you just kind of like roll this end up like this, and then you clip it. And then this, this is basically waterproof at that point. And then this is how I hang my food. Clip that around there. Make your, make your rope that you need and then tie up your food. When I'm getting ready for the night, I want to make sure that all the scented stuff, that my clothes, all the food, the toothpaste, tablets, whatever it is that might even have a scent to it, uh, even this, sunscreen, deodorant, all that type of stuff goes into a bag. Um, I usually carry Ziploc bags for all the wrappings and all the trash, and then I put the Ziploc bag in here. One bag for like all the junk stuff, and then I have another bag that has all the fresh food, and then I hang them both up at night. Just let me clear out this area a little bit, uh, and then I'll show you in my backpack what happens when you don't uh, <laughs> when you don't pack away all your stuff, all your stuff that might have a scent to it. So let me do that, and then I'll get my bag out.